Hello and welcome. I'm Patrice at Le Manoir and today I would like to talk about a rather geeky subject which is how do you get your client to listen to the mix when it of course the client is not with you in the studio and you have to send over some files uh, for your client to listen to and most of the time most of my clients only can listen in stereo so when I'm mixing in Atmos what I'm doing is sending a stereo file along with a binaural file so they can check both with their favorite speakers and headphones and most of the time I'm quite pleased to say that they're happy and so am I but some time ago I had a couple of clients who wanted to um, dive into the surround audio. One of them had a 5.1 system in his home but not like a, a consumer grade, a, a good one but a, a consumer grade home cinema 5.1 system and the other one had a brand new consumer again uh, Atmos system, not a soundbar but with um, speakers uh, sending to, to, to the ceiling uh, and they both told me the same thing which was Patrice uh, I have a problem uh, with your mix it seems all right to me but uh, for some reason the volume is very very low and I have to to really crank it up uh, to have a proper feeling compared to a DVD or Netflix or the TV and your mix is, is, is very very low and I, I can't understand why so that's why it's a problem for me to tell you if it's okay or not and so blah 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 so I had the little digging to do and here is what I found if you look at the Dolby Atmos renderer uh, what we have because of course uh, in, in both cases uh, I was in the ballpark regarding the minus 18 Lufts which is the standard for Apple music uh, and for in this mix I, I, I won't have you listen to anything today because of copyright issues but uh, basically uh, I was around minus 17 integrated which is th this level is the, the one I always uh, check the most and that was fine with that so there was no problem on, on this uh, on this side uh, um, and I also tried in my home home cinema and noticed that in yes uh, there is a I would say difference volume difference of about 15 dBs uh, between the mp4 that I could produce and any other uh, video file I, I could get my hands on so I was a bit embarrassed with that and I especially that I could compare with another mp4 file uh, which is one of the files that uh, the people at Dolby uh, send around and I got one for demo purposes and this one was well was no problem but if I would measure both of them uh, with um, tools like uh, R128 uh, GUI uh, on the Mac I would have the same results and even the, the, the demo file from Dolby would be minus 23 which is the standard uh, for television and I was minus 18 so supposedly uh, I guess normally uh, my file would have been at least as loud uh, as the Dolby one and so I did a little digging and went to the Dolby website and downloaded a copy uh, of a software which is not that's another software from Dolby uh, which is called the Dolby Media Encoder and um, as its name indicates it's only designed to encode Atmos files as you can see here in the input you can you have this input tab so you can select your Dolby Atmos file and uh, then choose among many possibilities all the um, output files that you may need and so what we were needed um, was the EC3N possibly the mp4 um, and uh, what I noticed is this parameter here 
which is the custom dialog normalization. And what I learned about this is that this you can set into the Dolby Media Encoder, which is a rather advanced program. And actually what you're seeing now is a demo that I got after registering on the Dolby website. And they were kind enough to send me the demo, it should expire soon. But I have no idea of the, the pricing system, which is written kind of nowhere. So my guess is that at the end of the demo period, maybe uh, I will be contacted again by Dolby and say, hey, what did you think? Are you interested? And um, <laughs> so then we can start talking money. So I don't know what it costs. Uh, and in this encoder, advanced encoder, you have um, access to more parameters than in the Dolby Atmos production suite. In the Dolby Atmos production suite, uh, this dial norm, as they call it, is set uh, automatically by the, the encoder. And here you can uh, play with it, or it, it's set automatically, or it's not set at all. I, uh, I couldn't get that information, unfortunately. Uh, but fact is that this dial norm is a thing which is um, strictly belongs to Dolby. And what it does is when um, a home cinema, AVR, and a player gets a Dolby encoded file and of course is compatible and has the, the, is licensed by Dolby, so the, the Dolby system is inside it. Um, what it does is that it gets um, a metadata uh, to change the volume. Uh, so what I noticed if, if I set this to its maximum uh, value, which is a dial norm with minus 31, then my MP4 file will play as loud as any other content and you don't have to touch the volume of your amplifier in order to have it play like you're playing a DVD and films, Netflix, TV, whatever, any other source. Um, and of course, this can easily be explained by the fact that um, the Dolby system is mostly used and have been mostly used in the past for movies. Uh, but now Dolby wants to set foot in music and that's a different story because in music uh, we do not have uh, any dialogue uh, in the st strict sense of the term. Of course we have a lead vocal most of the time, that's not for all music, but Let's say that most popular music has a lead vocal or a lead instrument. But when you're mixing music in Atmos, unlike films, uh, what you will do is most of the time use as many objects that you can. And then the lead vocal, which should be, could be analyzed as a dialogue, uh, actually is not in the center speaker because either you have used it in a bed and then it's mostly a virtual center, left, right, uh, or you've used it as an object and then the placement that you've chosen uh, will most likely not involve very much the center channel. So I don't know how actually Dolby is analyzing the content uh, of the program to define what is uh, this integrated dialogue here, which um, here on this track is for 25% of the content. Uh, and I think this has, this measure here has an influence on this dial norm. Um, but um, the problem I can see in the music, and I would, if someone at Dolby sees this, I'd be very glad to, to have an answer to that, is for the moment Dolby Atmos encoded music only streams through a few platforms, Apple, Tidal, Amazon. And I think that with Amazon you, you can't, uh, it's only if you have a specific uh, listing device. But what if in the days, months, years to come, um, 
music TV channels uh, want to play Dolby Atmos encoded videos. After all, that, that would be rather logical. Then how can we manage that? Because if it's a video clip, most of the time the loudness will be around minus 23 and most of TV stations are very strict about the fact that we need to respect that. So if we send them uh, and use the files that have been calibrated at minus 18, one could guess that the TV stations would reject them. But if the TV stations actually use this dial norm in, their, in the encoding process, or if it's encoded for them using this dial norm, uh, then wouldn't that result in the fact that the stereo videos, the usual thing, will play minus 23 and then that the, the, uh, the other ones will just feel much lower in volume uh, depending on where actually the, the, um, the Dolby decoder in people's homes uh, takes its information about the dial norm is that say that the TV channel has one information which remains consistent for any program or is that when it switch from a stereo video clip to a Dolby Atmos encoded video clip will then the AVR will take into account this and lower the volume in minus 15 dBs which is just gigantic um, so Anyway, uh, for the moment, what I see is that we should, I think, we should either have this parameter available somewhere here, uh, or it should be changed in a way we could access that. And again, if someone at Dolby sees this, uh, another request that I would have, and it's back on the topic of how do you get your client to listen to the Dolby Atmos mix, because another problem is that when I'm sending an MP4, uh, unlike when I'm sending a stereo file or binaural file, these are full resolution WAV files, so it can be listened to uh, properly. But if I'm sending in MP4, uh, it's compressed. The, the, the audio is it's it's a lossy uh, system. So uh, one of my requests to Dolby would be to have not a full uh, renderer like this but like a free application that would be simply a player so I could send the BWF WAV file to my client and it could use just this free app the player simply to play it and uh, have the the surround system either if it has a 5.1 or a Dolby Atmos 5.1.2 or 7.1.4 or whatever or a soundbar why not um, that it could listen uh, to my mix with a, a full uncompressed lossless audio quality uh, well that was my rent for today. Uh, please leave your comments uh, down below and I'll make sure to get back to you. Thanks a lot for watching this uh, and uh, well, see you soon. Bye.